now this uh, page 60 now we have to discuss students the need for political institutions so we have seen one example of how the government works and governing a country involves various such activities like for example the government is responsible for providing security to the citizens for providing facilities for education for providing health facilities to all so this is a work of a government if we see in a regulated economy in a mixed economy this is the responsibility of the government to provide security to the citizens to provide facilities to the education especially to the poor people and then health facilities especially to the poor people so in order to do so the government collect the taxes spends the money thus raised on administration on defense on the development programs and it formulates implements several welfare schemes for the benefit of the people some persons have to take decision how to go about these activities so when uh, all these activities the government has to perform so some people out of that government only they will take the decision on how to go about these activities others have to implement these decisions and if dispute arises on these decision or in their implementation there should be someone to determine what is right and what is wrong so it is important that everyone should know who is res who is responsible for doing what so it is also important that these activities keep taking place even if the person in the key position change so to attend all though all these tasks several arrangements are made in all the modern democracies such arrangements are called institutions and a democracy works well when these institutions perform functions assigned to them the constitution of any country lay down the basic rules on the powers and functions of each institution so in the example which we have seen uh, several such institutions uh, they are involved like the prime minister and the cabinet they are the institution that take all the important policy decision so it is the prime minister who enjoy all the real powers in our country and the cabinet okay all the close ministers of the prime minister they are the cabinet minister the civil servants working together are responsible for taking steps to implement the minister decision so uh, we have a a team of civil servants who are attached with these ministers then supreme court is an institution where disputes between citizens and the governments are finally settled down so working with institution is not easy institution involve rules and regulation this can bind the hands of the leaders so institution involve meetings committees routines procedure and then the this often leads to delays and problems also so if we have to consult so many people so many institutions so delay is also also there and problems also arise therefore dealing with institution can be frustrating it can be stressful one might feel that it is it is much better to uh, to have one person who will take all the decision without any rules any procedure any process any meeting but that is not the spirit of a democracy in democracy we uh, follow all the proper procedures all the proper process and we take a decision even if the decision is delayed but the best decision will come out so uh, this is that's why uh, so many procedures we follow in a democracy because it is a spirit of a democracy that we have to go uh, for the consultation negotiation with the people deliberation has to be done with the people it is a dictatorship in which the quick decisions are taken by the one person only but if we are saying we are living in a democratic nation then it is our expectation from the democracy that the decisions are taken after following proper procedures and the consultation with the people so some of the delays and complication introduced by institutions are very useful they provide an opportunity for the wider set of people to be consulted in any of the decisions so if we are living in a democracy then decision making there is a delay in decision making but we expect that the best decision will come out then uh, but they also make it equally difficult to rush through a bad decision that is why democratic government insists on the institution and if this much negotiation this much consultation this much discussion is done then we expect that it will uh that bad decision will not come out of such delays only a good decision is expected if so so much delay is there in the decision making now the next thing on the page 
now page 61 we have to uh, now see on page 61 the parliament okay now let's see the parliament so in the example of the office uh, memorandum so we have seen the role of the parliament uh, since this decision was not taken by the parliament but there was role of the parliament in this so let's see let's recall the points uh, made earlier by completing the following uh, this example let's see the report of the mandal commission was discussed yes it was discussed in the parliament in the both the houses the uh, president of india mentioned this in his address so you remember the president of india he mentioned this in his address in the parliament prime minister made a then he made a statement he also made a statement in the parliament and decision was not directly taken in the parliament but parliamentary discussion on the report influenced and shaped the decision of the government so but discussion was done in the parliament meeting was done with the cabinet minister information was there to the uh, president also so uh, they brought pressure on the government to act on the mandal recommendation so when discussion was there and majority one party is having absolute majority so they can put the pressure in the parliament they can create a sort of pressure that we want to implement the mandal recommendation and the, if, if the parliament was not in favor of this decision the government could not have gone ahead with it so if parliament was in favor then only uh, they can go ahead with it so uh, we have seen the role of the parliament here also uh, but now parliament could have done it if it did not approve of the cabinet decision so the opposition they can create they can also oppose the decision of the government and the discussion can be there for this also in the house and the parliament they can also they might uh, they might also disapprove the cabinet decision so this can also happen in a parliament so why do we need a parliament now in all the democracies and assembly of elected representatives they exercise supreme political authority on behalf of the people and in india such a national assembly of elected representatives is called parliament and at the state level uh, this is called legislature or the legislative assembly and the name may vary in different countries okay so all the elected representatives which we elect they sit in the parliament and they uh, take the policy decisions on our behalf so uh, the parliament exercises the political authority on the behalf of the people in many ways like the parliament is the final authority for making laws in any country so final authority is with the parliament legislature it is this task of law making or legislation is so important that these assemblies are called legislatures only so the parliament all of the world they can make new laws they can change the existing laws they can abolish the existing laws and they can make the new laws so this uh, this uh, power is with the word parliament parliament all over the world they exercise some control over those who run the government so the parliament they control these governments who uh, they have control over those who run these governments and in some countries like india this control is very direct and those who run the government they can decision only so long if they enjoy the support of the parliament and parliament control all the money that government have and in most of the countries any public money can be spent only with the approval of the parliament so now page 62 students so we were discussing the parliament and we have seen the powers of the parliament it is a final authority in making laws it control uh it control who run the government and it control all the money that government spends and parliament is the highest forum of discussion and dispute and uh, debate on the public issues and the national policy in any country so the parliament they can ask uh, about information on any matter so uh, these were the powers of the parliament we have seen now we have two houses of parliament so you know so since parliament plays a very important role in the modern democracy and most of the large country they divide the role and the powers of the parliament in two parts these are the chambers or the houses one house is directly elected by the people and exercises the real power on behalf of the people the second house is uh, elected indirectly and they perform some special function so we have uh, in our country we have in our parliament two houses the two houses are known as council of states rajya sabha and the house of the people that is lok sabha and the president of india is also a part of parliament although he or she is not a member of either house that is why all laws made in the house come into force only after they receive the 
uh, consent or assent of the president so uh, now let us recall some of the key differences between the composition of these two houses of the parliament so we have lok sabha the lower house and rajya sabha the upper house so the uh, total strength of the uh, lok sabha is 543 okay so 543 uh, plus 2 uh, the anglo indian okay the anglo indian uh, the president can nominate two members of the anglo indian community then after this uh, rajya sabha uh, we have uh, 233 plus 12 members that is 245 okay and maximum is 215 in the case of rajya sabha now who elects the members so in lok sabha directly elected the members the mps are directly elected and in rajya sabha indirectly elected by the mla so rajya sabha uh, the mps are elected indirectly by the mla now uh, length of the tenure in the case of uh, lok sabha we have our this we have five year tenure and in case of rajya sabha six year tenure so can the house be dissolved or is it is or it is permanent so lok sabha dissolve automatically after five years and rajya sabha is a permanent house now which of these house is more powerful now question arises this so it might appear that rajya sabha is more powerful it is the upper house and lok sabha is the lower chamber but this is not but the, it doesn't mean that rajya sabha is more powerful than the lok sabha this is just the old style of speaking and and not the language used in our constitution uh, so uh, our constitution does give rajya sabha some special powers but on certain matters lok sabha also exercise the supreme power so let's see like in the case of ordinary law it needs to be passed by both the houses but if there is a difference between the two houses the final decision is taken in the joint session in which members of both the houses sit together so because of the larger number of the members the view of the lok sabha will prevail obviously in such a meeting second the lok sabha exercises more power in money matters once the lok sabha passes the budget of a government or any other money related law the rajya sabha cannot reject it the rajya sabha only can delay it for 14 days and they can suggest some changes in it and lok sabha may or may not accept these changes so on page 63 students we were discussing the how the lok sabha it exercises the supreme power so we have seen in the case of uh, financial powers also lok sabha is having more powers and in case of legislative powers also now uh, let's see the third one the lok sabha controls the council of minister only a person who enjoys the support of a majority of the members in the lok sabha is appointed as the prime minister and if the majority of the lok sabha members they say they don't have any they they have no confidence in the council of minister then all ministers including prime minister they have to quit but rajya sabha does not have any kind of this power